The European Space Agency's Ariane 6 rocket has successfully blasted off on its maiden flight. Europe's newest rocket launched from the European spaceport in Kourou in French Guiana for a nearly three-hour flight. It comes four years later than initially planned. Companies from 13 different countries were involved in the rocket's construction and development. It's intended to transport satellites into space for commercial and public clients at a much lower cost than its predecessor. The Ariane 6 is meant to help lead Europe's space industry out of a crisis. It's designed both to launch satellites into orbit and make missions to the Moon and Mars possible. That's why there are two versions of the rocket. The smaller has two solid boosters that can transport lighter payloads into space. Its big brother has four and can carry two satellites. With an upper stage that can be ignited several times, Europe's new rocket will be able to launch satellites at different altitudes and carry them to practically any orbit. The Ariane 6 is meant to provide Europe once again with independent access to space. For around a year now, European satellites have had to be put into orbit on U.S. launch vehicles. Technical problems have delayed the new rocket several times. One goal with the Ariane 6 is to make space travel more competitive for Europe. Space has turned into an important growth market. More satellites were launched in the last four years alone than in the six preceding decades. The industry is growing rapidly. By 2030, more than 60,000 satellites could be in orbit around the Earth. The new rocket is entering a hotly contested market. Two, one. One that's dominated by SpaceX. The private U.S. company offers commercial satellite launches at bargain prices. SpaceX is also in the lead when it comes to technology. Its rockets are built with stages that can be landed and reused many times, which conserves resources and reduces costs. In the past year, the Falcon 9, SpaceX's workhorse rocket, took off almost 100 times. To keep up, launches of the Ariane 6 will have to drop in price. There are plans to also develop a reusable stage, introduce innovative production processes, and raise the number of annual launches. 30 orders are already on the books. The new rocket is slated to launch for the second time by the end of this year. A half dozen more launches are planned for 2025, and it's hoped 10 a year will take off by 2027. And for a closer look, I can now welcome journalist David Ariosto. He's the author of the upcoming book, Open Space. Welcome to DW. And how big a deal is this launch for the European Space Agency? I think you should mark your calendars now. The July 9th is uh, space, uh, Europe's Space Independence Day uh, from now on. I think you have a lot of very happy people within the European space market, um, as the, the piece that you ran just before this mentioned. Um, a lot of people have been waiting for this. There's there's been a heavy reliance on on U.S. partners, particularly uh, SpaceX, which has just dominated the launch space. Europe has not long not been using uh, Soyuz rockets from Russia for for quite some time now, and because of the Ukraine war, and Europe has its Galileo uh, navigation system that it really needs to launch in some of these some of these. Um, Falcon 9 equivalent or Falcon Heavy type of type of rockets into LEO, and it just hasn't been able to do that in a homegrown way. So Ariane is really Europe's answer, um, and an answer that's been wait that's been coming for about four years in delay, um, and that's been because of political setbacks and funding issues and technical problems, but also really the first time that Europe's been able to launch a homegrown market since July of last year when Ariane 5 had, had its last uh, last voyage. So a really big day in Europe, obviously. Mm -hmm. You mentioned a couple of reasons there, but are those the only reasons the European space program has lagged behind? Or was it just not a priority until now, maybe? You know, it's it's difficult, right? It's these these programs are difficult anyway. And if you look at sort of the commercial space in really almost any other capacity um, outside of SpaceX, it's just it's an industry that's just it, it rife with delays. These things are complicated. Funding issues uh, inevitably come through federal contracts, and when the politics change, sometimes the funding levels or the priorities change within that. Um, but I think 
you know, in the co context of, of what this rocket represents, it re represents a growing interest in space commercially, particularly in LEO. Um, but, you, you know, you make a good point in the context that this is still not a reusable rocket. And it's 2024, and the fact that there, there's unveilings of new rockets that are not reusable at this point is, is a real head scratcher. And now, you I mean, you talk to ESA and uh, the European Space Agency, and they'll say, you know, there's there's only a certain number of launches we're going to be doing th this year. I think there's six in 2025. But if you look at the SpaceX manifold, I mean, I think there's six before the end of the summer. So there's a there's a long road to catch up. SpaceX and others do it more cheaply. Um, that's partly because of the culture at SpaceX and partly because of the reusability of the rockets. So I think until you get reusability in maybe Ariane 7 that, that comes out uh, later on in coming years, you're probably not going to see the, the kind of competitiveness that uh, European um, the, the European industry leaders are looking for. Mm -hmm. That said, um, there's just a growing interest in space. And you know, clearly from an economic perspective, from a technological innovation perspective, I think countries increasingly re recognize the importance of putting more resources into low Earth, Earth orbit, at least. Um, that's not even to mention cislunar space. So we're going to see more of this coming up in, in the weeks, months, years ahead. That was space journalist David Arioso. Thank you so much. Thank you.